We have a lot of ground to cover today, so I'm gonna get right into it without an intro. We're ranking an organic fireplace poker. So, 7 16th round, 32 inches long is what I'm starting with here. Now, I'm just gonna get that heating up, and we're gonna do a forge weld. Forge welding is really not something I recommend for beginners, but a lot of you guys just can't keep your hands off it. So I'm just going to show you a forge weld anyway. If you're going to try it, you might as well see a good example of it. So this one we're going to be doing a self weld where the piece is coming back onto itself and then forge welding it back on. We're making a spurred uh, poker that shows you what we're going to do. So first step is to scarf the end of the bar, which I'm just getting it hot here, and we will begin. I'm fact, by the way, welcome. Step one, scarfing the joint. So what I'm gonna do is put a dull point on the end of this bar, and just round that out. I'm trying to make a shape that, I don't know, it looks like a rodent snout to me, for lack of a better word picture. Uh, scarfing does a number of things when preparing for a weld. In this case, what we're doing is trying to bring out a feathered edge that's going to blend into the steel that it gets welded into. Also, one of the primary reasons for a scarf is to make a convex surface, a rounded surface. Uh, the idea being that you want two rounded surfaces coming together, touching in the middle and then pushing out. What you don't want is concave surfaces or cupping surfaces which are going to create an area in the center there that's going to hold flux or scale and then cause an inclusion in the weld. So you want the weld to touch first in the center so that is your scarf should always have a shape that accommodates that. In this particular case this this is as simple as the scarf is going to be. So if you're doing a weld and you have just for example you had two square bars that you're welding like this that are going to be welded together. What you do when you're scarfing is to bring down basically you want to bring it down to a feathered edge but at the same time you want to make this convex surface here. So when these pieces come together The two pieces are meeting right here in the center and then they're pushing stuff out either all directions as they make contact in that center. So imagine like if you take two spoons and you would put them with their convex surfaces touching. That's really the idea that you're trying to create there. So we make first contact here and then as the weld closes down on either side here it pushes everything out all this debris flux, the scale and everything goes shooting out there and then you should get a pretty much pristine weld on the inside. So that is one of the primary reasons for scarfing. Another reason for scarfing maybe depending on the type of weld you're doing is you're actually upsetting the piece or you're bringing extra material in because you have to hammer these pieces together. So you might have to actually upset a piece to add extra mass there so that you have enough material to hammer it together that once the weld is closed there's enough material there to have sufficient body for that particular piece. So anyway that is a very messy diagram. Hopefully that will clarify things a little bit for you. Let's get back to the actual weld. Step two, about three inches off the horn, I'm just gently tapping this around the horn bringing it back onto itself, creating an eye shape. And then about an inch of flatness against that piece there. Uh, because this is a round bar that we're working with, it's already convex, so we've got two convex surfaces meeting. So this is really quite ideal for as far as a welding surface. So now I just want to brush this off. I should probably get actually a little bit more heat on this side to stick the flux to it. So I'm just at a dull orange heat now. I just want to get um, hot enough that the flux is going to melt on. First thing I'm doing is taking my wire brush and brushing away the excess scale. Want to get a nice clean surface there. Once I have that, now I'll bring my forge borax in place here. And just with a spoon, I just sprinkle it over and cover the entire area where it's going to be welded. So flux 
whether you're soldering, welding, brazing, whatever, the purpose of flux is to keep out oxygen. We need the oxygen in the fire to get the fire hot enough to come up to welding temperature, but what we're doing is using the flux as a shield to keep that oxygen out so we can get the heat without having the oxidation on the surface so that this can get up to molten without scaling and we can actually then hammer it together. That is the whole concept of forge welding. So when you're forge welding, you wanna have a tightly packed fire, meaning that uh, the forge pot here should be full of nice, clean coke that is burning. You don't want it hollowing out. That's gonna cause extra oxidation and you wanna get a nice, even heat on there. Now I'm gonna set this right in the hottest part of the fire there and then I'm gonna take some pieces of coke and cover the thing over loosely. I wanna get it all covered over. At the same time, I usually like to try to keep a bit of a window that I can see my piece of steel because I wanna watch it come up to temperature. So I don't really wanna disturb it, but I wanna be able to get my eyeball on in there and see that piece of steel come up to the white heat. So this is very critical stuff. You want a clean fire for this. You want it tightly packed. You want to have lots of nice coke. You don't want to have green coal, which is going to contaminate your pristine environment. So is to have some coke built up and, and using that um, for doing forage welding is a really good idea. So I'm bringing the fire up to heat. I'm just watching a couple sparks jump out. I don't want a shower of sparks come out of the fire, meaning that I'm burning my piece. But at the same time, a couple sparks indicate that we're at the proper temperature. And I can see that my piece is pretty much translucent. When I pull it out of the fire, it's at the white heat. Now the camera always is going to, it's just going to be a glare for you guys, but it is very white hot when I first bring it out. So I want to start tapping on it fairly lightly and then lay into it with quite a bit of force when the weld really starts to sink in. And you can feel it kind of smush in under the hammer and you know that things are welding nicely as opposed to bouncing against each other. You can certainly feel that difference. Okay, so that seems like a pretty decent weld. One of the problems with this type of weld is that it's coming back on itself. There's a split there, which is a weak structure. It's like a crack going into it, so it can tear away from itself. But what I find is when I do the spur, I do it on the parent piece or the original piece so that it can take a little bit more torque coming off there. Then we bring the point part across on the piece that had looped back on itself. I'm not sure if I'm being articulate on that, if that's making any sense, but it just helps to keep that structure together. And as I put this together, then it will be sufficiently strong enough and the weld is not gonna tear away from itself. So there we go, we've got our forge weld. I'm just gonna get a little heat on there and then I'm gonna cut here to form what is gonna be the spur. So about an inch from that crotch there, I'm cutting it off using the cut off hardy. find with try to get in this tight spot and straighten this out I actually use the side of the hardy to straighten that piece out there and don't work with the cutoff hardy in place very dangerous I'm just putting in a dull square point on this piece, which will be the poker part of it. Just using up the last of this heat here. Get it hot again now and I'll start forming this spur. Alright, I'm just moving this out of the way on the horn so I can get to it and get a point on this. Now I can sh start shaping that spur. Basically it's coming off on a right angle but with a curvature to it is what you're looking to achieve. And now that I've got that in place I can put this on the horn here and get that front part tucking down, put a slight recurve on that, 
and lo and behold, there we go. So we've got our poker end here. This is the traditional spurred poker. Always reminds me of Bugs Bunny. If you're from my generation, you grew up watching that and you would have seen and when he was told to draw poker, that is what he drew. So anyway, that is what I always think of all these years later. So that's the working end there. Now we're gonna flip around and go to the handle of this poker. So for the handle of this poker, I've decided I'm gonna do this organic twist here, but I wanna put a leaf on the end there just to make it spruce it up a little bit. I made this poker on the fly one time. I was at some medieval festival and I, I forgot to bring a poker along, so I made it up pretty quickly and I've just kind of kept it with me. You can see it's polished from my hand from daily use. When students see this, they really love it for some reason. Even though this, I didn't really take a whole lot of time to get the aesthetics or anything right. It just seems to almost work. It just has a very crude organic feel. But what I'm gonna do is something with a leaf on there and try to do it maybe a little bit more formalized. I'm trying to give you guys ideas as a beginner intermediate blacksmith for products that you can make and then go to your local craft fair and, and sell them or you know sell them to in some consignment shop or whatever it is that your outing is or social media, I don't know. So I'm just trying to give you ideas as far as projects that are simple and doable. This one I'm just I'm kind of freestyling a little bit as far as what the design is, but you can just kind of extrapolate with the details how you want to do them. But anyway, let's carry on. Okay, so part two of this, we are now doing a leaf. So I'm gonna start out with drawing a square point onto the end of this bar. And it's not very long, only about three quarter of an inch long. And then I'm gonna come out with the piece over, maybe about an inch over the edge, and hitting with the hammer half on, half off to create a shoulder there. Now come in with my cross peen. I want to get behind and thin this out. All right, now we can go back to our leaf here. So you see I've got this sort of bullet shaped piece now, square taper and then necked off about an inch long. That's gonna become our leaf, get some more heat on there. Okay, so what I'm doing is just hammering straight down on that bullet shape there and letting it bulge out to create the leaf shape. And if you do it right, you're not really hitting the edges so much as pushing in the center and it's forming that shape. Now what I'm gonna do is just take the hot chisel and just put a little bit of veining in there. We will be doing a more comprehensive video on leaf making in upcoming video, so please subscribe and stay tuned. We're making all kinds of videos all the time. I wanna give a shout out to Mr. Web Guy for this one, asking for a fireplace poker, so I hope you like what I'm coming up with here and leave a message in your comments below. Okay, so I just took the hot chisel there and quickly put in some veining there just to give it more of a leaf-like aspect. Now what I need to do is draw this out even more. And once again, you could do this by hand if you are a hobbyist in your garage, but because I'm a professional and I have a power hammer, I'm gonna jump onto my power hammer now and get some length on there just to speed things up. So bear with me. I just want to draw it a little bit more fine going up into the leaf there to get more of a graceful transition. Just doing that by hand. Now we've got a fairly consistent taper with texture, which we want to, for the organic feel, which is about, I would say, nine inches long at this point. I think I may have to texture back a little bit more here before I bend this around because I'm gonna be bringing back quite a bit and then curling into itself there. So I think I'm gonna heat up back in here and just get some texture so that when this comes in place that we'll have more of a homogenous flow through. All right, just getting texture here. So I'm just hitting this and kind of rolling it indiscriminately. I don't want this to be too consistent. Now we've got texture 
back probably 14 inches so we got lots of room here so now I'm gonna be able to bring the handle back on itself okay about I don't know seven eight inches from the tips let's say eight inches from the end of the leaf I'm just bending it down on the horn here and bringing that back around Okay, I'll get some more heat on there and now we're gonna wrap that branch around the end there. Okay, so I've got it hot right there. I'm gonna try to do this all at the anvil here. You can do this in a vise, which is easier to grab it, but you can also, if it's hot enough, it should move around. I need to get my leaf so that it ends up with the veins out. All right, that is working reasonably well. Get some more heat on there and get that final little bit. All right, let's just take this home now. Trying to find some funky cool way to curl this around. Trying to get my leaf to end up less on what's going to be the bottom of the handle and more towards the side there. So I think that actually wraps around. That was pretty decent, I guess. So you can see where I textured out. I've basically come all the way up to now milled stock, which I don't like for this being organic. So now the only thing left to do is to texture the rest of this. You can also see, I don't know if you can see, that my orientation is a little off. Now I know what you're saying, it's 2019, your orientation can be whatever you want it to be, Thack. But if it's off, you can fix it. Controversial, I know. Okay, so anyway, this is twisted to the side here and I need to bring it into alignment with the actual poker part. But because I'm gonna be texturing this, I've got a lot of time to be able to heat this up and I should be able to work that out without even going to the vise if I do it correctly. So I'm gonna heat that up, start texturing that out. That's putting texture in. I'm not, I mean, letting it kind of distort and bend a bit too. I don't want the thing to be too straight. And now I'm just putting some torque on with the heat to straighten out that handle in its orientation. And you can see I'm just letting it kind of bend and flow like a twig there. Really going with that cool organic look. So that's about as far as I can get on that heat. I'm gonna cool the thing off and come in from the other end. All right, this should be the last heat. I'm just texturing it the last little bit here. One last straightening, twisting to get it into orientation there. And I wanna have bends in it, but I don't want it to be too ridiculous. So get it more or less straight. Okay, that was a fun little project. And this is something that a intermediate, I would say not quite a fresh beginner, uh, might be able to tackle. The forge well being the, probably the trickiest portion of it. The rest is just basically working through. It's just take, take some time and you can play around with it. This gives you a lot of latitude though to mix it up, make it your own, do a lot of different uh, you know tweaks and stuff like that to give it your own personal flavor. But there you have a poker. Okay, there is our poker. This is part of a series of projects for beginners that they can experiment with practical projects to have an outcome and something that you could perhaps sell or at least give away as gifts to your family and friends and that sort of thing. So here's the poker. If you look back in the series on this, we've got the Shepherd's Crook handle, which is another handle version that you could do with the same type of poker, poker, something a little bit more formal, a little bit more traditional looking, or you can do this more um, organic feel. You could even do different poker ends on that there. So 
a lot of different variations that are certainly possible with this. So please tune in, subscribe to our channel and look at the different videos we have um, on this series and we're developing more. We'll be doing another one on leaves more specifically and probably doing something like a towel bar as far as the end project for that one. So check out the links in the description below for other videos that are in the same vein as this particular one. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you want. I don't care, you know, just uh, give us some sort of feedback. Let us know how we're doing. So that is it. Till next time, back out. See ya.